No, I don't think anybody would deny that Martin Scorsese he is a certified legend in Hollywood. The guy's been pumping out quality cinema for longer than most of us have been alive. When you walk into a Scorsese movie, you know you were in for something cinematic and more often than not memorable. Some of his movies are more accessible than others, but I don't think he's ever made a bad film. I just went through his resume, I narrowed his extensive filmography down, and I've came up with my picks for his top 10 movies. So let's get into it. Kicking this list off at number 10 is a film I think could be considered a bit of a forgotten gem in Scorsese's filmography, and that would be the 1986 sports drama The Color of Money, starring Paul Newman, Tom Cruise, and Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio. I also think you could probably consider this to be one of the more basic of Scorsese's mainstream films, but it is anchored by a trio of excellent performances and Scorsese's impeccable direction. Scorsese makes playing pool look cool with his camera techniques and his choice of angles and song selections. The film would earn four Oscar nominations. Paul Newman would win the Oscar for his smooth performance and a young Tom Cruise as the ever cocky Vince would show that he could act alongside the best as did Master Antonio, resulting in a timeless and engrossing film that's very strong on many levels. Next up at number nine is a movie that really showcases Scorsese's talents at directing a thriller with tinges of horror, and that would be a Shutter Island from 2010, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Emily Mortimer, and Mark Ruffalo. Here, I think Scorsese takes a skilled ensemble cast led by DiCaprio and creates a haunting mystery thriller that plays very frequently in the horror playground as well. This is a haunting film driven by a compelling and unsettling narrative and just what I would consider to be a exceptional performances. I think Scorsese flexes his versatility here and he crafts many eerie and tension-filled moments while navigating through this multi-dimensional plot line. The cinematography is amazing. It's beautifully gloomy and Shutter Island can easily immerse you into its foreboding atmosphere when you're looking for a just a cinematic escape. Moving along to my number eight pick is actually Scorsese's latest film, the gripping historical drama Killers of the Flower Moon, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, and Lily Gladstone. After seeing this film two times now, I can safely say that Scorsese's latest Killers of the Flower Moon is certainly one of his best. I think how he explores the atrocities committed on the Osage Nation during the 1920s is emotionally gripping. It will enrage you, it will touch your heart, and it all spurs from the performances of DiCaprio, De Niro, and in particular, Lily Gladstone, who provides this film with just a riveting character to gravitate to. De Niro is pleasantly vile. DiCaprio, I think, is at close to his best, with Scorsese crafting a beautiful piece of cinema fueled by a dramatic undercurrent that will easily reach in and just grab you right by your heart. My number seven film is Martin Scorsese's exploration of the mob and Vegas in the provocative 1995 crime drama Casino starring Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, and Sharon Stone. They say the mob built Las Vegas and Scorsese's crime epic Casino explores the violence, the corruption, the greed, and the lust that I guess got the job done like only Martin Scorsese could. It's elegant, it's seductive and violent and sexy at times, and Scorsese balances this all-star trio to perfection. Pesci and De Niro are, I would say, near perfect in their roles, but it's the emotionally charged performance from Sharon Stone that I think really steals the show. I think Scorsese can get the best out of you, and he certainly does here with this cast. I think the music, the cinematography, the editing, and the detail of the story just make Casino a timeless saga on the foundations of Vegas and its connections to the Italian Mafia. Thank you. 
Next up, we're stepping back into Scorsese's earlier years for my number six film, the gritty street-level crime drama Mean Streets from 1973, starring again Robert De Niro and this time with uh, Harvey Keitel. I think this could easily be considered one of Scorsese's more underrated or, if anything, often forgotten films, but it's a very raw and gritty street crime drama that thrives on its bare-bones craftsmanship, the natural lighting, the simplistic but effective direction from Scorsese just makes it feel like you are inside these guys' lives, living it with them as they go through the highs and lows of the criminal underworld in the neighborhood. The characters and the story do develop smoothly. It builds tension nicely and Think that's what keeps you lured in it's intimate at the right times it's violent during others and the nostalgia of mean streets is like time traveling back to new york during the early 70s With that film in the books, we've reached the middle of the list. For number five, I have Scorsese's bold, vibrant, and often gratuitous stock market biopic, The Wolf of Wall Street from 2013, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, and Jonah Hill. I think it's easy to see that Scorsese is having a lot of fun crafting his depiction of the self-indulgent lifestyle of Wall Street brokers during the late 80s. The cast is fantastic, DiCaprio delivers a charismatic performance, and Scorsese's flashy direction Direction is really perfect for the subject matter. The lifestyle was fast cars, excess at every level, nonstop drugs, endless rivers of money, wild sex, and this movie shows how debauchery can affect the weaknesses of human nature. This is a strong film in terms of direction, editing, scoring, and certainly the performances, but its bloated length is a bit unnecessary, making it a bit of a turnoff when you're just wanting to sit down for a movie and not sitting down for your entire half of an evening. Moving along to my number four pick, I have another biopic, one that many would consider to be the best boxing film ever made, 1980's Raging Bull, starring Robert De Niro, Kathy Moriarty, and Joe Pesci. I think if any film truly captures the triumph and tragedy of a man, it is Raging Bull, a masterpiece that would earn a staggering eight Oscar nominations. De Niro would win for his portrayal of Jake DeLamata, and his raw performance in the hands of Scorsese is really a masterclass in compelling filmmaking. I think Scorsese's direction and his craftsmanship in this film is impeccable as he takes the viewer back in time with just gritty but very pristine visuals. It's not an easy watch at times as LaMotta hits rock bottom and then hits rock bottom again, but Raging Bull is nothing if not world-class cinema on every level. We've reached the top three films on my list, and for my number three pick, I have Scorsese's gritty psychological thriller Taxi Driver from 1976, starring Robert De Niro, Jodie Foster, and Sybil Shepard. Taxi Driver would certainly be the film that I think put Scorsese on the map. It would earn four Oscar nominations, and the mental descent of De Niro's Travis Bickle is chilling and pleasantly unsettling. Scorsese's capturing of the seediness of New York is perfect for this story. His direction is just intimate in all the darkness and this ominous film can capture your imagination before you know it the performances are fantastic and the unpredictability of Bickle in the hands of De Niro is a flawless spiral into madness Next up for my number two film is a true classic in the genre of crime dramas, and that would be The Departed from 2006, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack Nicholson, Matt Damon, and Marky Mark Wahlberg. I think this really is a true modern organized crime classic. It's gritty, it's multi-layered, and Scorsese directs this all-star cast with ease. The quiet moments are compelling as the story evolves, and the stark violence is unsettling. It catches you off guard like it's supposed to. It was nominated for five Academy Awards, winning four trophies, among them being Scorsese for Best Director and the film for Best Picture. And really, this is, I think, cinema running at full speed from storytelling to performances to editing to direction to scoring to cinematography the departed is close to perfect <laughs> 
Now, before getting into my number one pick, let's go over some honorable mentions because, you know, Martin Scorsese is going to have a few. Uh, first up, I have The Irishman. I think it's a solid mob saga, but it's a bit too long and the de-aging effects don't work so well when they're used for such a long period of time. Next up, I would have Cape Fear. I really do like the sadistic performance from Robert De Niro. I also love this performance in The King of Comedy. That's another honorable mention of mine, as well as uh, Bringing Out the Dead with Nicolas Cage. Age. All these honorable mentions are strong films, but just uh, not strong enough to make it past an honorable mention nod for a director that has so many hits like Martin Scorsese. Now, with the honorable mentions aside, we reached the top spot. My number one Martin Scorsese film, and I had to pick uh, just one of my all-time favorite films in general, the 1990 mob classic Goodfellas, starring Ray Liotta, Joe Pesci, and Robert De Niro. Goodfellas is just that modern gangster classic that can easily sit at the top of the mountain next to The Godfather. De Niro and Pesci are simply awesome in these vicious roles, but really the star of the show, without question, is Ray Liotta. Martin Scorsese, always comfortable in this genre, is able to give each of these powerhouse performances a lot of room to breathe and work. Uh, Scorsese would get a Best Director nomination, and the film would receive five other Oscar nominations, with Joe Pesci winning the trophy for his supporting role. I think Goodfellas is filled with many memorable moments, character development that will really intrigue you, uh, many quotable lines, and Scorsese's direction creates an elegance to all the brutal violence and bravado that makes it a timeless gangster classic. And that wraps up everything for today, guys. Those are my picks for my top 10 Martin Scorsese films. I really hope you enjoyed this look back at an iconic director's career. Uh, let me know what some of your favorite Scorsese films are down in the comments. I'd love to hear what your picks are. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. I really do appreciate all of your viewership. I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. And until then, movies never say die. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Chop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Live a war, you gotta become war. I suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball?